So let's talk about third line, the third line which is about adaptation. Remember that when we have the middle area of the trigrams, meaning the lower trigram versus the upper trigram, that middle area is very dynamic. There's a lot of movement there. And the three is what takes the brunt of the movement. It's a movement from three to four, right? Lower trigram, personal destiny, research and development to upper trigram, which is all about externalizing or getting the message out or leading by example. So the three in and of itself is not solid. Remember at its basis, at its core, it's yin just like the one is more yin as far as the line is concerned. So it's not solid. It has a lot of brokenness to it. And it can get really pessimistic if you're a third line and you don't understand that you are all about the trial and error. That you are all about the making of the mistakes. It's through making the mistakes that we learn and grow. We have to learn by fire, trial by fire. So even though it has more contact with the outside world, banging around into people, making mistakes, tripping, falling, that kind of thing, especially if it's on the physical side. It has more contact with the outside world, but it's still absorbed in its own process. So it's like, I remember as a kid, I used to read books and I still do, but I, I used to do this more often because I would read in school and I'd walk around with my book in my hand, nose buried in a book, literally just reading as I was walking between classes because I was absorbed in my own thing. For me, it was fantasy fiction back in the day and doing my thing and banging into the mistakes that we make as a three. So the trial and error theme is all about living many lifetimes of experiences within the one lifetime because we bump into so much. You go into what an experience is expecting, maybe great things as a three, five, and everything that can go wrong will go wrong. You break things, things break, it just doesn't work. And the way that we can make a difference in life is to teach from the challenge, the problem, the mistake, to discover what went wrong. So if you have a three in your life, you yourself are a three, or you have any threes in your life, particularly children, the most important thing you can do to help them is ask them when something goes wrong, don't cover it up, don't ignore them trying to cover it up, say, hey, what happened here? What did you learn? What did you learn from the experience? Because its purpose is an adaptation or adaption as Ra liked to call it, to discover what the world is about. It must experience in order to understand its life. Because theory, research, oneness, the first line, is not what the three is about. Must experience in order to understand. So testing, validating, you know, finding where the flaws are, that's its job. And so can you see why you would become pessimistic if you didn't know your own process was to find the flaw in life? So you stand up for a principle. Something's broken. We need to fix this. Don't do that. It hurts. There's something wrong here. This is what needs to happen because I've found the flaw. So if you don't understand that you're here to find the flaw personally by experiencing it for yourself and then teaching from that, you get the martyr complex. Why me? What's wrong with me? Why now? Why does this always happen to me? Poor me, pity party, something wrong with me. I'm a fuck up, I'm a failure. So by learning through failure, you as a three, if you are a three, brings new solutions into the world because you kick them and we bounce back up again. We're resilient, we're adaptable, we're mutative. That's our job description. I can feel that that is my life process and um, the reason I shared it like that is because I am a three and I've made tons and tons of mistakes in my life. I've made every single mistake you can think of in the human design experiment, <laughs> mentally. I could go into all kinds of storytelling because this is my lifelong learning process is for all 21 threes out there. It's about not having a boss, period, period. And I tested that theory. Guess what? Doesn't work. I'm a projector feeling confined and not liking the way that I was getting frustrated and angry. That's not me. 
I'm going to read to you what it says in the rave I Ching, okay? In this, under 21, it starts with, The channel of materialism is unique in the body graph. It stands alone as a single channel, a self-enclosed unit. It is the only outlet for the two streams of awareness which determine the nature of the ego, its strength, its will. In this sense, it rules our tribal life. Okay, another word for this, we call it biting through in the rave I Ching. Okay, biting through. It's the power for life on the material plane. It is a great conditioning force in our world. To have this gate in your design demands that you control where you live, what you wear, and what you eat. This trait can never afford to have a boss leaning over their shoulder. It is the trait of the hunter, huntress, and it is their ego drive to dominate. If this trait had a voice, it would say, I control. If it is in a situation where it does not control, its power can never be fulfilled. This channel or strength is keynoted in human design as the money line. In BG5, in the large business, we call it the strength of management. Now, for 21, here's the kicker. If they are not in control of how they make their living, they are always far from success. Now, when I came to human design experiment in the beginning, I remember reading this and going, wow, yeah, I recognize that. I've always been my own boss. It, my first business was at age 16. Even if I was working for somebody, I was always most likely, most often, an independent contractor because anytime I had to work for a boss, I would find myself quitting, okay? Now, if I'm going to the hexagram description in the rave I Ching, which if you're... Mm, a serious student of human design, uh, the line companion, is a really good buy. It doesn't, it's not required in, in BG5. It's something that you get if you're going to become a human design analyst. So now here, I want to remind you that this is about being in control. And in the not-self, the shadow state, my mind was thinking, oh, if I'm trying to be in control, then I'm not self. And only when I came to the differentiation degree program a couple years ago did I realize, hey, wait a minute, that 21, quality three, it's my values. It's my relating. I have a genetic need to be in control. And in the beginning, I would, because I was so conditioned to be a masochist, quite honestly, as far as you're not designed to have a boss as a 21-3 unless you are a masochist and you like pain because that's what will happen. Here, it's the justified and necessary use of power in overcoming deliberate and persistent interference. This is not written anywhere else in the Ray of I Ching. Those are very strong words. You're here to be in control. And whenever you have a boss, it doesn't matter how great that boss is. Because what will happen is at some point, snap, there goes the third line, bonds made and broken, and you will leave, okay? Because what happens here, particularly in the third quality, if you, if you read into the line companion down further, it will say uh, a, a lack of will for the material path in order to protect the ego. And because of the way that the stars and the planets are aligning right now, we don't have access to the we call it exaltation and design. It's the elevation in BG5, right? Okay, so we don't have access to that. All we have, my friends who are 21 threes, we have a lack of will for the material path in order to protect the ego. So the moment that we have a boss that starts to control us, boom, goodbye. Hexagram 21 is called biting through. So we come to a trait that has an enormous significance in our lives. It is a trait that often creates a lot of problems because it is the only trait that is designed to be a controlling trait. It can only be a controlling trait because it has the most powerful ego. 
The fact that it is a controlling trait, the fact that it is a powerful ego is legitimate. In other words, this controlling force is necessary in order to be able to serve and protect the tribe. The 21 is here to serve the community. It is here to establish for the community what is viable and what works. It is here to make sure the community has what it needs, the food, the shelter that it needs, and the work that it needs. It's here to make sure that there is a reward for those efforts, that society not only works, but has time for leisure. In other words, it is there to look after the needs of humanity living together on the material plane. It is part of the channel of materialism or strength of management. Because the 21 is a control trait, it is also very difficult for people and often extremely difficult for the 21s themselves. Above the lines or qualities, it says, the justified and necessary use of power in overcoming deliberate and persistent interference. Now, these are very strong words. You will not hear that kind of language in any other trait. In other words, this, it is not here to overcome unintentional interference. It's not there to overcome interference that is not or non persist, that is not non persistent. It is there to be in control. It is justified in the use of its power. This is the ego that must strike out. That is why it is an ego that is very uncomfortable for those who have it and those who have to experience it. The way in which 21 operates, it has to do with the nature of their design. So in an undefined heart center, or willpower function, with the 21, it's very different from a defined one. A 21 with a defined heart center, willpower function, is very different as a generator, as a manifester, as a projector. In other words, there are a lot of complexities in how this trait can actually operate. If you have the 21 and you are an advisor, people in your life have to recognize that you have to be in control. Otherwise, you are not meeting the right people. If you are a builder with a 21, you can only take control when somebody asks you and you respond to it. If you are a 21, that is an innovator, you have to ask others permission before you control them. If you are a 21 with an undefined heart center, it will power function. All you can do is wait to be offered control because the moment you claim control, you will break your heart. This is where the heart sits. The physical biological heart remembers the 21. So everybody who has the 21 who is not allowed to exercise their power to be in control, those people in their lives who do not allow that are killing them, literally. This is a deeply misunderstood hexagram. The 21 has a right to be in control. It has a justified and proper right to be in control. But depending on the design, the control will be allowed and will come out in different ways. The moment that it is there, the 21 has to be trusted and allowed it to do its job of serving the community. This is an ego that will truly serve the community as long as it is recognized in its power. And so for years, it really happened when the financial crisis, 2007, eight, I had a really hard time. And that's when I started grinding my teeth at night and developing TMJ, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction. That's also a biological correlation. Remember, biting through of the 21, recognizing that it's nobody's fault. It's just that I don't do well with a boss. It can't. It doesn't work. This is what we threes are here to learn. What does not work and teach from that experience. So in my design, I'm a wide split collaborative assimilation. I do have a small group strength. And when I got my first analysis, my consultant said, you have a lot of worth in, in a business. So don't settle, don't compromise. And that's what the 14 tends to do. A 14 will compromise in the not self or the shadow state. 